another project already. I haven't even finished this one yet, I muttered. Be grateful you have work. Multitasking is what professionals do, the section chief said, walking away from my desk. My name is Ryan, and I'm a software engineer in my third year with the company. This job rarely lets me leave at a regular time. No matter how quickly I finish tasks, new ones keep coming in. The main issue is our manager. He agrees to take on everything, which is a problem. He doesn't track our schedules or progress, so the workload is insane. The only time I remember leaving on time was a couple of years ago. The manager was away on a business trip, and I decided to hang out with some co-workers. We went to a bowling alley, where we met some ladies playing in the next lane. We hit it off and decided to go to a bar together. That's where I met my future wife, Ava. Ava and I got married about a year after we met. My job was as hectic as ever, and I was constantly working overtime. But on weekends, Ava and I would go out for movies, dinner, and shopping at the mall. Lately, Ava had been experiencing a lot of lower back and abdominal pain. She tried massages, chiropractic treatments, and osteopathic care, but nothing seemed to work. One night, she had not just her usual back pain, but also severe abdominal pain. I found her condition alarming and called an ambulance. We ended up in the ER in the middle of the night. I thought it might be appendicitis, but I was way off the mark. The ER doctor, an internal medicine specialist, looked quite concerned and said, Ava, you should see a gynecologist immediately. A gynecological issue? She's been wanting kids. Is she going to be okay? Worries flooded my mind. All I wished for was Ava to recover. The next day, I took a day off and accompanied her to a renowned hospital's gynecology department. It turned out Ava had uterine cancer. It had advanced and even spread to her colon. I blamed myself. She started showing symptoms of back pain about six months ago. Why didn't I take her to the hospital sooner? If it had been detected earlier, she might have had a chance with surgery. She was given just three months to live. I immediately discussed this with my supervisor and department head. All I wanted was to leave work on time as much as possible. I even went to my team and asked for their understanding and cooperation. My colleagues were very supportive. The following three months until Ava's departure went by in a flash. Honestly, I felt numb, like it wasn't real. I couldn't even look back at her past. After her funeral, I didn't feel like doing anything or even going outside. I didn't want to go back to work, but considering my colleagues who supported me, I felt obligated to return. So, I resumed work after two weeks. After lunch, I was called into the conference room. Both the department head and manager were there, looking grim. Ryan, we understand you had a tough time at home. But look, our work situation is also very challenging. Leaving on time for three months and then taking two weeks off, that's not acceptable, the section chief said with a tone dripping in sarcasm. Yes, I apologize to everyone in the department for any inconvenience. I said, although deep down, I thought I hadn't really inconvenienced the director, who wasn't involved with the computer program at all. Next, the manager chimed in. You don't want to be in a busy department, do you? We happen to have an opening in our office out in Iowa. You'll start there next week. I remembered hearing from a colleague, probably Mike, that if you took consecutive days off or refused overtime several times, you could be sent to a less desirable position. With Ava gone and a void in my heart, I didn't care where I worked anymore. Working had become so insignificant that I simply didn't care about it anymore. Feeling utterly disheartened and lacking any motivation, I just sat there, nodded, and returned to my seat. Sometime later, I moved. My new location was a quiet rural town. Demoted at such a young age, huh? I mumbled to myself, looking at the vast landscape. Before I knew it, a week had passed since my transfer. The new company, for better or worse, was a place where I had a lot of free time. 
hardly any need for overtime. I could work at my own pace. One day, I was coding a simple program at a coffee shop for a change of pace. After a while, droplets began to fall on the table I was using. It was raining outside. For a second, I thought the roof was leaking. Looking up, I saw a soaked girl with brown hair and streaks of red and blue, kind of looking like a rebel, staring intently at my laptop. Worried about the water damaging my laptop, I began to shut it down. But the girl quickly said, Wait. Hey, mister. You work with computers, right? Can I see? I'm kind of interested. Well, yeah, but you should dry out first. Don't want you catching a cold. I replied and called the staff. Excuse me, can we get a towel for this young lady here? As she dried herself off with the towel brought over by the staff, she thanked me. Thank you, sir, for the towel. She might have looked like a handful, but she had manners. I was pleasantly surprised. We continued chatting over warm coffee. The girl, named Catherine, was a senior at a nearby public high school. She had just started her senior year and was unsure about her future. I'm not really academic, you know, so college isn't in the cards. But I want to pick the right job, Catherine shared. She had tried various part-time jobs like working in a factory, being a cashier at a grocery store, and even fast food, but nothing felt right. Then I thought, everything's about computers nowadays. She didn't own a computer, but got interested after some lessons at school. If she wanted more options for jobs, knowing computers would be essential. I told Catherine, I'll be working at the coffee shop for the rest of the week, so if you need anything, feel free to drop by. The next day, and the day after that, she came to the coffee shop. When she asked my name and I told her, she began calling me Mr. Smith. What's all that stuff you're always doing on your computer, Mr. Smith? All those letters and stuff, it looks like some kind of spell. Oh, this? It's called programming. It's used to make websites and blogs. After explaining how websites are made by combining various characters and symbols, she became very interested. Do you have a computer at home? I asked, to which she replied she didn't. Eager to learn, Catherine began to copy the contents of my screen onto her notebook diligently, day after day. After about a month of this, I made a proposal. You'll learn faster if you actually use a computer rather than just copying things down. We've got an old laptop at the office we were going to toss out. Want to use it for studying? Her eyes lighting up, Catherine exclaimed, Really, Mr. Smith? I can have it. Yeah, it's old and not the best, but better than nothing, I explained. That's fine, just having one is great. A few days later, when I gave Catherine the computer, she jumped up and down and said, Yay. From the next day, she came armed with a barrage of questions. She was diligent, buying books to study from and bringing a notebook filled with questions to go through. Thanks to that, she was able to launch a small website just six months later. Hey, I can use this as a reference for job hunting, she said with a gleaming smile, obviously delighted. With job interviews just days away, Catherine dyed her hair jet black. Catherine, you look so professional. Just for now. Once I secure a job, I'll go back to being stylish, she said with a bashful smile, slightly pouting. Good luck with your interviews. Thanks, Catherine replied, flashing a peace sign with a big grin. Two weeks later, while I was at our usual coffee shop, Catherine burst in excitedly. Ryan? Ryan? Guess what? I got a job offer. She reported the news with a radiant smile as if a flower had blossomed on her face. I replied, That's great. Congratulations. To my surprise, Catherine started crying, still wearing that big smile. Ryan, thank you. Getting into my first choice company is all thanks to you. I really appreciate it. Seeing her like this made me happy. To me, Catherine always seemed a bit quirky, but I found her irresistibly charming. Ever since Ava left, there had been a gaping hole in my life, but Catherine slowly started filling it. Soon, I realized I spent more time 
helping Catherine study than dwelling on memories of Ava. No, Catherine. I'm the one who should be thanking you. Do you want to go out for dinner next Sunday to celebrate? She cheerfully replied, Sounds great. And just like that, it was April. Good morning. A person from HR greeted everyone as the morning meeting began. Today, we'll introduce the new employees who will join us this year. All right, all of you, please come forward. The personnel at the back were beckoned to step up in front. What? Upon seeing the three new recruits, I almost dropped the documents I was holding. Among the new hires, there were two men and one woman. The sole female employee was Catherine. As Catherine caught my gaze, she discreetly flashed a peace sign with her right hand. Indeed, Catherine had joined the ed department I was a part of. Good morning. You know, you surprised me. I thought you'd start at the company where you got your job offer. I was planning to ask you how you were doing once you settled in. I was worried. I told her. She giggled. Ha ha, be prepared to work hard. Okay. Please go easy on me. Catherine stuck her tongue out playfully and smiled. Every time I saw that smile, it warmed my heart. Asked if I had romantic feelings for Catherine, who was seven years younger, I'd honestly be unsure. But one thing's certain, she's a special presence in my life. On the morning of the new fiscal year, seeing Catherine's face was a surprise, but it gave me a new goal, to nurture this adorable girl into a full-fledged programmer. I felt that my life, which had been just a daily routine of doing the work in front of me, was now filled with a sense of purpose. When I got home that night, I looked at a picture of my wife and talked to her. Ever since you left, I've been like an empty shell. You must have been worried about me, but after coming to this countryside town and meeting Catherine, teaching her about computers almost daily, I've been distracted from my sorrow. I wonder if you're jealous watching over me and Catherine. I'll do my best to be a reliable senior, so please watch over me. I will walk firmly forward so that you can rest assured. With that, I silently made a promise to Ava in the photograph. 